Okay guys, uh, getting toward the end of our review for the Keystone test. Uh, this video I couldn't really put up on the board just because I'm going to need other sheets for this video. Uh, mostly your code on sheets that we went over in class. So before we begin that, just to give you a little overview on DNA, and I'm sorry you can't see me uh, in this one, but you got hands. So um, Anyway, so just to go over the structure of DNA, we're going to have three parts to our DNA nucleotide. And if you remember, our nucleotide is going to be our monomer of nucleic acids, and they come in two different varieties. We are going to have our DNA, and then secondly, we're going to have our RNA. So for deoxyribonucleic acid, we're going to have three parts for our nucleotide, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with um, RNA, but our three parts are going to be our phosphate group, and that's there. It's our phosphate. Second part is our deoxyribose, and this is again for DNA only. For RNA, it's going to be uh, ribose instead of deoxyribose. And then lastly, we're going to have our nitrogen base. Okay. Now there's four different nitrogen bases. For DNA, it's A, T, G, or C, which stand for adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. Difference between this uh, nucleotide and then our nucleotide for RNA is going to be the nitrogen bases are going to be pretty similar, except it's going to be adenine, and instead of thymine, it's going to be uracil, but still going to be guanine and still going to be cytosine. If you remember uh, from class, we went over our base pairing rules. G is always going to bond to C for DNA, and A is always going to bond to T. All right, and that is for DNA only. Now, when we get to RNA, it's gonna be a little bit different because for RNA, G is still gonna to bond to C, but A is now gonna to bond to U all the time, okay? Now, one more thing I wanna go over uh, with DNA before we start to get into the formation of a protein is when we have our double helix for DNA. Now, I can't make a helical structure um, I don't want to keep going around it. It'll get real sloppy real quick, but we're going to have the rungs of our ladder and then we're going to have the middle of our ladder, which is going to be a middle here. So here's our rungs. Um, DNA is sing or, I'm sorry, double stranded. So we are going to have two rungs. RNA, it's single stranded. So it's going to be only one of these rungs, but in the middle here is where our nitrogen bases are going to be. Okay. Um, I'm just using different colors to represent them, guys. Okay. Um, on the outside here, guys, this is called the backbone of DNA. That's our backbone. It's made up of two parts. So the backbone is made up of our phosphates which are these guys up here. So our phosphates and our five carbon sugar, whether that's deoxyribose for DNA or just ribose for RNA. So the second one is our deoxyribose. And then inside the rungs of our ladder, these are where the nitrogen bases are gonna be. So if this is A, this was obviously be T. If this one here was G, that would be C. Um, that would make this one C and that G. And that's pretty much all our base pairing rules are for DNA and our structure of our um, double helix, okay? So I think that's pretty much all you guys have to know. And this is gonna be obviously DNA going to DNA. And this process happens for DNA replication, okay? Um, moving on from there. Get rid of those. Um, we are going to start to form a protein. Now, there was two different charts we went over in class. There was this guy. Uh, I know you guys probably didn't like him as much um, just because he just looks very congested. And then our second one was, was this one. Much easier thing because you just start in the crosshairs in the middle and you work your way out. Okay. I'm going to go over both of these with you and how to do, how to use both of them. Um, but to start, we're going to start to do like I said, formation of a protein and in forming a protein, I think the best way to do it is let's review our different mutations while we're doing it, okay? So if we are doing, uh, starting with DNA, 
we are going to first go to mRNA. Okay, so we're going to first go to mRNA. Now, the DNA going to mRNA, this is called transcription. Transcription. And it occurs inside of our nucleus. Okay, so if we want to do our base pairing rules, we're going DNA to RNA. Um, the C is going to go to G. The G is going to go to C. Now the A, instead of going to T, it's going to go to U. Okay, and I'm working my way across. And there is our sequence of mRNA, okay? And we can also go to tRNA, and that would essentially be going back to almost the same base pairs as in DNA, with the exception of the Ts would be used. So if we want to go to tRNA, the G would go to C, the C would go to G, the U would go to, you know, back to A, okay? But I'm not going to do those. Let's go um, straight to our amino acid next. All right, so when we take the mRNA and we go to the amino acid, this is called translation, okay? And it happens in the cytoplasm on ribosomes. Whether these ribosomes are free ribosomes or whether they are on the rough ER, um, they could be either place. So here's what we're gonna use the chart, guys. And like I said, I'll use both of them. So to start off, our first um, code on, Sorry guys, lights went out. Hold up. That's better. Automatic sensors could be a pain. Um, so our first codon here, and that's mRNA. mRNA is the codon. Uh, tRNA is the anti-codon. We are going to use our first triplet, which is G, C, U. So we're going to start in the middle. We're going to go to G, we're going to go to C, and we're going to go to U. And you guys can see that goes to the amino acid alanine. So the goal here is to make a protein. So we got alanine there. Um, our second one, UAC, UAC, that goes to tyrosine, TYR, okay? And then let me switch up tables here just so we get comfortable with both of them. Our third one is gonna be C, G, G. So we go C, we go G, and then our last one is G, so first, base is here, second base is here, third base is here. So again, it's C, G, G, and that's going to be um, arginine. So it's A-R-G. A-A-G is our next one. So you start here. There's our A. Second box, there's our A there. And then our third letter is a G, so A-A-G. That's going to be our lysine. And then the last one, U-A-A. -A. So U-A-A. That's going to go to a stop code on. And usually we'll find those at the end of a sequence. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all you guys have to do for determining an amino acid. Now, I set up some problems here where we are going to take our DNA and we are going to mutate it. So I have the regular DNA here. I have our mutated DNA here. So we're once again going to go to our mRNA. All right. But instead of doing that, because a lot of this is going to be the same. Let me find where my difference is in my DNA sequence. So CGA, CGA, that's the same. ATG, ATG, that's the same. GC, okay. So there's my difference right there. That's where it starts. So everything else, we got the two C's there, TTC, TTC, ATT. Okay, it's all the same. So I can pretty much copy down all of my mRNA from the previous one, except for one letter. Okay. Now, you guys can see that it was a G, so we went to C, but now it turned to a C, so we have to go to G. Okay. Um, after that, I can put in my amino acids, because they're mostly going to be the same. Okay. This was the only one where my change was, so we're still going to have our alanine. We're still going to have our tyrosine. I'm going to skip that one for now. Still gonna have our lysine, and then that's still gonna be our stop codon. But the change was in the um, the CGG is now GGG. So 
let's do G, G, G on the chart. G, G, G. Um, it's no longer going to go to our arginine. Instead, G, G, G goes to glycine. So G, L, Y. All right. Now you guys could see this mutation ended up having a different uh, amino acid. And it was only one amino acid. So that's why up here I have missense. That's called a missense mutation. All right, that is our first mutation there, okay? Now what I did, guys, to go through all the mutations to make it easier and to cut this video down in size with, uh, with respect to length, um, I'm done with missense, but I kept that same DNA sequence for our next one. So for silent mutation, I still did the, the same DNA sequence. I still have my mRNA. Everything's the same up there, but I switched up my letters down here, okay? So once again, we're gonna to go to our mRNA, but let's locate where our change is first, okay? Um, so it looks like we have a change right here at the beginning. ATG, GCC, that's all the same, TTC, A, yeah. Everything's the same except for this first one. And if I look here, the letter right there, that T, cha that T changed. So we're still gonna have our G, we're still gonna have our C, but the T's gonna change. So. UAC, CGG, AAG, and UAA, okay? So now the T is gonna go to A. And then once again, we're going to do our amino acids, where many of them are going to be the same. That was the same, that was the same, that was the same, and lastly, our stop. But if we look at the front here uh, of our sequence, GCA, well, let's once again get our chart out. GCA, okay, so start in the middle. GCA, okay, it goes to alanine. Well, if we compare this to our original sequence, it's the same amino acid there. That's why we call this one a silent mutation. It actually does not change the amino acid sequence, where the missense mutation, that changed one amino acid, just one, okay? That's what the missense one did. The silent mutation does not change any of our amino acids. It is still a mutation, but it's not as uh, harmful as a missense mutation, all right? Next one, that's gonna be our nonsense, okay? Uh, again, I kept the top the same there. Let's do our mRNA. Um, CGA, CGA, that's the same. ATG, AT, okay, so something changed there. So I can do the U, I can do the A, and everything going past that is the same. So now we had a G and now it's a C. So instead of having UAC, it's going to go to UAG. Now if we go to our amino acids, GCU, that's still gonna to go to alanine, okay? Um, our second one, we now have UAG. UAG. So UAG, that's gonna be a stop. And that is why we call this a nonsense mutation because nonsense means it's literally going to stop right in the middle of the sequence. We can't go any further because uh, of the because we, we've reached the stop code on. So our translation process stops, and that's nonsense, guys. So just to review, missense, that changes one amino acid. Silent, it changes our sequence, but doesn't change any amino acids. And nonsense, we have a premature stop code on, okay? One more, one more. So our last one is called a frame shift. And with our frame shift mutations, we can have a insertion or a deletion. Um, I only did one example here, guys. I'm not gonna do both insertion and deletion, but just to start off, okay, the C, that's the same. Right off the beginning, it, something changed here. And if you look um, past this, all of my um, triplets have changed. So all of my codons are going to change. If everything is changing down the road, that tells you right off the bat that, okay, it's a frame shift. Either it went this way or it went this way, okay?
So we gotta determine if it's an insertion or a deletion. So we have the C, that was the same. Now we got the G turned into a C, but not really. So what happened was if we match it up, the G is there, that A came over here, now that A is in the middle. So everything shifted that way, okay? And why it shifted that way is because this C right here got inserted, all right? So just, we're gonna have to do the amino acid sequence, or I'm sorry, the uh, mRNA sequence right from the beginning um, because it's gonna be completely different. So the C is gonna go to G, that goes to C, the A's go to U, Okay, and now we will do the amino acid sequence. Use my other chart this time. So to start off, we got GGC, G, G, C. That's going to be glycine. U, U, A, U, U, A. It's going to be leucine. Um, our next one is CCG, so C, C, G, proline. We have a G, A, and A for the next one. Um, the GGA is uh, going to go to, sorry guys, I'm sorry, GAA. Uh, GAA is going to go to GLU. And then lastly, GUA is going to go to Valley. All right, so you guys can see how every single one of these um, changed. All of our amino acids are different than the above, and that's how you determine if it's a, a frame shift, okay? Um, so that's all with DNA, guys. That's all with mutations. Again, make sure you know your differences between DNA and RNA. Um, DNA is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. DNA has thymine as a nitrogen base, and that's substituted with um, uracil for RNA. Uh, lastly, the five carbon sugars are different. DNA has deoxyribose and um, RNA has ribose. All right, guys, a few more videos to come. We're almost there. Have a good one.